Hi, good afternoon. This is Kevin with MyBar.net. I am a consultant on the NetSuite platform, and today I'm here to show you the inbound shipment management functions. Uh, this particular tool set allows typically a purchasing or a supply chain planning team to um, indicate which purchase orders might be on a particular container. Sometimes it's referred to as container management. And from there, track that container uh, across the water, particular dates, uh, and then eventually receive that container as well as apply landed costs to that container, uh, even if that container contains uh, purchase orders uh, from uh, multiple different purchase orders uh, or if a purchase order is spread over multiple containers. So let's take a look, dive right in, and uh, great. All right, so you'll see under transactions, and I believe it's under purchases, we have this create inbound shipment. So this particular screen is where we can go to start building a container. So it's important to point out that NetSuite's not gonna necessarily recommend, you know, how we build the containers. It doesn't, it's not looking at the, uh, the sizes of the items and building the container for us. We would do that offline. And then once we're ready to put these items onto a container, we could then come in here, you know, we might have uh, a document number, we're going to say, oh, it's shipping out, say, on the 6th, right? We can, And then, on, of course, when it actually ships, we can update that here. Our delivery date might not be until, you know, July 29th, whatever it might be. You know, it, it might have a vessel number, bill of lading number, et cetera. So these are native fields here at the top. Uh, you'll also notice that you can add custom fields to this record. So if we wanted to... Uh, you know, keep track of the trucker invoice or things like that. We can actually uh, link out to those here. Let me just move this real fast. Uh, down on the bottom left, it says add PO items. And so this is where we can actually add uh, specific items from POs. When we click this, it pops up this interface. So I'll move this over here. Uh, so we go to select a vendor. I know it's not necessarily a real sele uh, selection, but I'll choose Amazon. Everyone's familiar with them. And what will happen is once we select a vendor, you can actually select multiple vendors at a time. So if I selected Alex Valley Vineyards and click this, you can actually then see all the POs for both of these vendors, right? I'm gonna just drop Alex Valley Vineyards real fast. And you can see now we have a smaller subset of POs. And from here, I can actually add uh, same concept, multiple POs at once. Maybe I'm shipping three together um, and click that. And now it's going to add all the items from these POs to this particular container. Now, I might come in and say, actually, certain lines like this line here isn't shipping with this shipment. So we have just this line, this line, and this line uh, from this PO. So these two POs will be closed out when we receive this container in. Uh, and this PO will still have a remaining line open. Um, I believe we can even come in here and identify uh, portions of a line. So if you wanted to put 200 uh, or a different quantity than that's on the PO, you could see what's remaining here, put 200 and rate comes from the PO. Uh, so when we click OK, everything's going to kind of cook and the NetSuite's going to add this to our inbound shipment record. So our next step would be our landed cost. You can come here and see uh, the cost categories, right? And so a more complex example, you might actually be adding freight, import fees, landed cost duties, all in here. Uh, for today's purposes, I'm just gonna add freight like this. Um, and just real fast, I'm gonna look back at these uh, items here to see our total quantity. So it looks like we're receiving uh, 270 make things easy. I'm going to add a $2,700 bill. So we want to add, um, right, I'm going to specify dollars here. We can have multi-currency support. This will be the effective date. And then our allocation methods. These are the three available. Uh, unfortunately, volume is not here. You get asked that quite a bit, but uh, quantity, value, and weight uh, do support a lot of use cases. So uh, we'll choose quantity for today. Uh, and then you can actually apply this to specific items. I believe you have to choose them both here uh, so you go like that and click add row and now it's going to apply uh, this landed cross across those items Great. Right, so now i hit save give it a minute to cook and beautiful we have our uh, inbound shipment 
So again, this record is editable. It's also available through the CSV import utility. So you maybe you created one through the CSV import uh, utility, or maybe you want to update it. That's, you know, quite often we're asked, uh, uh, there's a number of dates that might be involved when it lands at the port, when it you know gets gets through customs, things like that. So we can keep track of all those dates, build workflows on this, uh, anything that you think might make sense as part of the the shipping process. Uh, but once this is created and it's still over there, we can come in here and actually say mark in transit. Uh, and now we're basically just saying that this is now an in transit as opposed to just a, a created shipment. So. Um, Next step is depending upon where you take ownership, if you take ownership while it's on the water or before it's on the water, when it's overseas, you can click this action. It brings you to a take ownership transaction where you could then actually receive this in uh, on your balance sheet uh, as inventory in transit. Um, or if you take ownership uh, once it lands uh, closer to home, uh, you would wait until you, uh, you know, it's ready to receive the item. So say three months go by, we'll pretend it's, you know, July 29th. We'll click receive here, right? When we go to scan this shipment in. Now there are WMS solutions that actually will interact directly with this inbound shipment. So if that's a concern on your project and your, you need your team uh, in your warehouse to be able to scan like a bill of lading number or a shipment number or something like that, and then receive them all, well, we'd be happy to talk with you about that. But here through NetSuite's UI, we can click receive and it brings us to a receive inbound shipment screen. Um, and on this screen, you can see we have these three different items going to, you know, we can even bring them into three different locations. This is a sub location of this location. Uh, there's an inventory detail to be configured here. So we're going to just say that all 20 of these are going into this uh, inspection bin, right? The rest of these are like this. And what's going to happen is even though it's one uh, interface we're looking at, we're going to hit save and it's going to um, create three receipt records for this. So uh, I ran this a couple, about an hour or so ago to, to test for this. It took uh, a couple of minutes to process. So um, it looks like actually this one went much faster. That's perfect. We'll come in here and you can actually see the three different item receipts that were created for this uh, transaction. So if we were to go into one of them, we can now see our Kindle Fire has been received into the location. We can see our landed cost, uh, freight value. And if we actually come into our GL impact, you could see that the system uh, you know, credited our crude purchases, debited our inventory, classic item receipt, and then also did our uh, landed cost receiving where it debited the inventory and then credited the account that was specified, if you recall before, on that landed cost, we chose the category. That category in the setup maps to a, uh, a, an account you specify. Here it was uh, a freight and delivery account. And, uh, and now we actually bake the, the landed costs into the finished goods. So um, great tool for uh, purchasing managers or supply chain teams that need to keep visibility as to what's on the water, when it's coming in, attributing landed costs to those items. Uh, if there was a vendor prepaid build against this purchase order, uh, you know, NetSuite has the vendor prepayments transaction. So then we can uh, apply those prepayments against the invoices that are generated from these receipts. Uh, we have the ability to take one PO and build multiple containers from it. We have the ability to take uh, multiple POs and put them on one container. Uh, so that many to many relationship support so uh, overall great functionality here in the uh, land of cost uh, and inbound shipment module and if you do have any questions feel free to reach out to us thank you so much